Hi and welcome to our third video in this series on differentiation and using stationary points and in this video we're going to be having a look at kind of the modeling style questions that you might get in the exam which are to do with kind of maximization problems or even minimization. So um, we've gone through finding stationary points and determining the characteristics of those stationary points so let's have a look at that at how that's going to get applied in context. And what I've done is effectively picked three examples um, just to give you a sense of the different kind of questions that could come out of you. So here we go. First example, we've got, uh, let's say, questions in context. In this case, we've got a farmer wanting to build a rectangle enclosure. We've got one wall already been uh, used as, as the wall of the barn, so we've got to kind of create the other three sides of this rectangular enclosure. So the question is, what's the largest area that she can enclose? So that's the, the maximization element to it. So obviously, as we adjust the length of the sides, so let's say if I make that side there much shorter, you get a kind of long, thin rectangle, and the area of this long, thin rectangle would be smaller than the one that we're seeing here. And of course, as that gets longer, then this side here is going to get shorter. So if we make this much, much longer, we end up with a very kind of tall, thin rectangle. So as we're adjusting the length of the side, the shape of the rectangle is changing, and sorry, the dimension of the rectangle is changing, and so the area is changing as well. So what is our, our best length of side to give us our biggest possible area? So let's just set this up um, in terms of length of side of the rectangle and away we go. So we're going to say, okay, let's call one side X and obviously the opposite side of that is X. And then we've got this side here, which we're going to call Y. And what can we say uh, about this rectangle? Well, the first thing we can say is that we know that the area is simply just X times Y. And also we've got a fact in here, which is to do with this one here. So we've got 100 meters of fencing. So we know that that distance there, if I trace it out, is 100. So we know our perimeter, which is 100, is 2x plus y. Now, because essentially we've got two variables, we've got is it, the length of this side is one variable, the length of that side is the other. So there's two variables. And because we've got two variables, we're going to need two equations. So the vast majority of uh, questions of this kind you're going to have to set up two equations and then use one equation to replace one of the variables in the other one. So because we've got to get this down, so we're just working with one variable. So what we're going to do is just set this whole thing up so we have got the whole thing just written in terms of x. And being as the thing we need to maximize is area, this is the one that I'm going to be focusing on, so I want to get rid of the y variable here. So I'm going to go down to this one, perimeter is 100 equals 2x plus y, and just do a bit of rearranging. So we're going to get our equation like that. So 100 is, sorry, try again, y equals 100 minus 2x. And then this can now be put into here, and then that will give us an equation just in terms of x for the area. So area is x times y, so we've got that, bit of multiplying out, and so there is our equation just for the area. So what we're saying is, as this side changes, this one will kind of change the link to it. So basically, we're just going to make changes to this one and see what happens to the area. OK, so we know that the maximum value for x will occur when the differential, the gradient function, how a is changing, uh, is 0. So basically, we're saying dx, a dx equals to 0. And if it's going to be a maximum, we also know that d squared a over dx squared has got to be less than zero. Now, this might be the first time you've seen this kind of differentiating notation in terms of different variables. Previously, we've seen dy dx. This bit, where are we? Come on, mouse right here. There we go. This bit here just means we're going to differentiate a. So we're going to differentiate the expression that's a. I'm going to do it with respect to the, the variable, which is x. So this is basically saying, how is a changing when we change x? effectively what's going on and obviously this bit we already knew about in terms of the second differential and telling us whether it's a max or a min. So on we go let's do some differentiating so da dx equals 100 minus 4x we know that the maximum is going to occur when that thing equals 0 so when da dx equals 0 so we've got 0 equals 100 minus 4x and that's a simple job just to do a bit of solving. So we've got our value uh, where we've got our max, or potentially our max. We've now got to actually check that it is a maximum point. So let's go and differentiate it a second time. So if we differentiate, you'll notice we've just ended up with minus 4. And basically what that's telling us is, is that it doesn't really matter what x is. There's no 
x is anywhere near this, we know that d squared a over dx squared is minus 4, so that's going to be negative for all values of x. And if it's negative, that means it's a max, so we definitely have got a maximum point. Okay, now, the question doesn't say where is the maximum occurring. The question says what is the largest area she can enclose. So, obviously, we've got to take our value of x at 25, and we've got to put it back into our area formula. So, I'm saying the maximum area is... 100 times 25 minus 2 times 25 squared, which is 1,250 meters squared. There we go, and the question is answered. So what we've done, it, we've, we've answered the question, we've checked it's a maximum, everything's okay. Now, normally in the exam, that will probably uh, that will probably be enough, and you've answered everything you need to, but just in this particular instance, I'm just going to have a, I'll just show you the, the graph, and just show, so you get a sense of what's going on with this. And there it is, you can see our area function is essentially a negative quadratic. And you can see that as x values are very small, then the area will be very small. And gradually, as we make x longer, yet the area gets bigger until we get to this point here. And this is where at 25, there it is. That's when our uh, rate of change of how the area is changing onto x becomes zero. So it stopped, the rectangle stops getting bigger and starts getting smaller again. And you can just ignore my dog that's barking in the background. And then there we go. We've got a max value. Uh, when x is 25 and then after that point uh, what we're getting there is kind of a, a tall thin rectangle and basically y is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until we end up that's it with again very small values for our area so that's it can just give you a sense of kind of how the math is fitting together with with what the actual problem is doing so that was uh, a reasonably straightforward uh, problem to solve let's go and have a look now at something that's uh, a little bit more technical here we go. So what we've got is a uh, tin of Campbell's condensed tomato soup. Obviously other manufacturers are available. And what we've got to do is we've got to make our volume of our tin for the soup that contains 600 millilitres. We're told that in the question. But obviously the manufacturer wants to try and reduce his cost by minimising the amount of metal that they're going to use because obviously that keeps the cost down. So we can adjust the dimensions of the tin to keep that volume at 600, but we can actually make the amount of metal used as, as small as possible. So what we've got to do is start by setting up some equations. An obvious place to start would be with the volume. So there's our volume, pi r squared h. And we're told in the question, that's, there it is, that that volume is 600. The other thing we've got is the surface area. So that's going to be uh, the amount of metal uh, that's going to be used to make the tin. So we need the formula for the surface area of a cylinder. And hopefully you're familiar with that. There's the net. So we've got the curved surface area, which is the curved face, or if you like the label, if you like, which is this rectangular shape. Height of the tin is H. We've got the top and the bottom of the tin with radius R. And clearly, kind of this distance here is going to be the same as the circumference of the circle. So that distance there is 2 pi R. So our total surface area is going to be the area of the rectangle, 2 pi R times by H, plus two circles. So there we go, there is the formula for the uh, surface area, or the, kind of the amount of metal that we're going to be using in this case. And again, the same as we had before, we have got to get this search so just written in terms of one variable. So what I'm going to do is take the volume and just do a bit of rearranging and make that say h equals. So there we go. And I'm going to take that, uh, this expression for h and sub it into our area formula. There we go. A little bit of tidying up so we can cancel out the kind of pi r there so we end up with let's just check where this comes from we've got 2 times 600 which is 1200 notice here we had r squared on the bottom we've just got one r on the top so we've got 1200 over r or r to the minus one and this bit stays untouched so there's our expression for area we've got it just in terms of the one variable so again the area is going to change depending on what we do to the radius i.e how big we make kind of essentially the uh, the radius of the, of the top and bottom of the tin. And that's going to automatically adjust the height if we're going to keep the volume fixed at 600. So we want to find how that's uh, how the area is going to change as a result of changing the, uh, the radius. So let's do the differentiating. Here we go. So we've got minus 1200 over r squared plus 4 pi r. We know that the minimum is going to happen when dA dr equals 0. So chuck that in. There's an equation we've got to solve. So a little bit of rearranging. So all of them here is multiplied the whole thing through by r squared. Move the 1200 over, divide by 4 pi, do a bit of cube rooting, 
and there we go we've got our value for r right, so the question is asking for the dimensions of the tin so we know what r is so what we've got to do now is go and find out what the height is and we can get that from over here because we had it here h equals six over pi r squared so there it is let's put in the value of r and there we go uh, we've got a radius of 4.57 the height 9.14 the last thing we've got to do, it says in the question is, prove this is a minimum. So let's go and get that bit done. So that's, those are our dimensions. Let's say, well, can it, that's our uh, differential, our first differential. If we're going to prove it's a minimum, we're going to need the second differential. Again, being careful because minus 2 is going to come to the front. It's going to make that positive. And that's going to become plus minus 3. And again here, remember pi is a constant. So 4 pi is just a constant. This is 4 pi lots of r. So the R is just displayed off there. So there's our second differential. And since the radius is greater than zero, what that means is this bit here, which is 2,400 essentially over R cubed, that's got to be greater than zero. That bit is greater than zero. That means D squared A over DR squared is greater than zero. So therefore, zinc is most definitely a minimum. There you go. And we've answered the question accordingly. OK, final example. And here we go. This one is uh, a bit of a classic for math teachers everywhere. Kind of most math teachers will have done this with classes at some point. And, you know, originally it was uh, started out as a kind of a GCSE investigation back in the day. But we can apply a bit of A-level mathematics uh, to find a, a slightly swifter solution. So what we've got is imagine a sheet of A4 paper and you're just going to fold that A4 paper and fold it up to make a tray like the diagram there. And it's open top, so it's not a complete cuboid we've got uh, the top missing. So we're saying what is the maximum possible volume you can make for a tray made out of a sheet of A4 paper. So there's our sheet of A4 paper, 29 centimetres by 21. It's not quite 29 by 21. I've done a little bit of rounding, but it's it's close enough for the purposes of this task. And what we're going to do is do a bit of folding. So there's our folds. So we've got to fold the sides that we've got to fold the ends up. And what I'm going to do is say, well, OK, that's going to be the base. And then you've got the height there is h. So that's effectively the distance from the fold to the edge of the paper. So what that means is the distance along uh, that edge there is going to be 21. That distance there, take away that distance is h there, that distance is h there. So effectively kind of one of the dimensions for my cuboid is going to be 21 minus 2h. And by the same idea, the other one is going to be 29 minus 2h. So what that means is I can express the volume of my tray just in terms of h. And again, this whole thing is just in one variable, because obviously if I make the sides higher, that's going to reduce the dimension of the base, which is going to impact on the volume of the tray. So here we go for my volume. It's going to be the uh, two dimensions, 21 minus 2h, 29 minus 2h, times by the height. There we go. So there is a formula for the volume of the tray. Do a bit of multiplying out, and what we end up with is a cubic. And so, therefore, I've now got to do the differentiating to find how the volume changes as I change the height. So there we go. There's the differentiated version. We know that the maximum is going to happen when dv dh equals 0. So let's put it equal to 0. And again, it's a fairly nasty quadratic, so let's just grab the calculator and put the calculator to good use and get that solved. So we've got our two values of h, one's at 12.7 and one is at 4.0. So in this particular case, we've ended up with two possible values. Now, what we could do is investigate both and determine which one is a maximum, which one is a minimum. But if we think about them in the context of the question, if you think about particularly this one, when h is 12.7, well, let's just think about what's happening on this dimension here, or the 21 minus 2h, that would become 21 minus was it 12.7 times 2? What's that? 25.4. So that thing would become negative. So what it means is that value of h uh, isn't going to happen in the context of this particular question. So what that means is the only value of h that's possible is this one here, this 4.01. So we've decided that h is 4.01. We want the maximum possible volume for the tray. So let's put that back in to here. There we go. Do the multiplying and we end up with the maximum possible volume which is 1092 centimeters cubed and again I've, I've done a little bit of rounding there last thing we've got to do is check we had two possible values we discarded the uh, value of 12.7 or whatever it was 
so we want to make sure that we've discarded the right one and we haven't actually discarded our maximum and this thing we hopefully this will find that this thing is not a minimum we've got to check for maximum min so that means we're going to differentiate a second time so there we go there it is differentiated the second time so there's our first differential here's our second differential and now let's put our value for h into there when h is 4.1 we've got that which turns out is less than zero and if it's less than zero therefore it's a maximum so we know we found the maximum possible volume for the trade jobs are good